Today, I'm going to show you how to make the Candy Buttons Crochet Blanket. Now, this blanket was inspired from that nostalgic candy from back in the day called Candy Buttons. If you're not familiar with Candy Buttons, they're basically just different colored sugar dropped onto white paper and packaged. These candies were super pretty, and I think that's what made them so popular because there really wasn't very much sugar or candy in those packages. You tended to get more paper than anything else. But the way they were packaged and their bright colors just attracted people to them, especially kids. So I decided to come up with my version of a candy button blanket. These are puff stitches that we work for the candy buttons, which are separated by single crochet rows and a double crochet two double crochet rows throughout the blanket. This is a 12 row repeat, and I know that sounds difficult, but it's not as bad as it sounds. So stick with it, give it a try, and you'll come up with your very own candy button blanket. I am using all acrylic yarn for this project. I've got a, a blue, a yellow, a coral, and a green, and my main color is white and I'm using the Impeccable by Loops and Threads and I will show those different colors along the top here. I'm pretty sure they still make these colors if you want to use the same colors. If not, you can pick any colors that you want. If you want to go more pastel, if you want to go more dark rich colors, this blanket looks good no matter what you do. You will need quite a bit of yarn for this project. I think I used about three balls of that impeccable for the main color, white, and each ball is about 285 yards. For the colors, I used at least two balls for each color because we will be carrying the yarn on these rows here. And of course, you wanna make sure you have some left over for a nice border. I'm also using a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook and any other pattern notes you can find down below in the description box. But enough talking, let's just jump right in. To start, we're going to put a slip knot onto our hook and you want a chain multiple of four plus one. So that basically just means you chain four, 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 until you get to the width that you want your blanket and you add one extra chain. For the blanket that I did, I chained 121. 120 chains for the multiple of four plus one was 121. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to work a small sample swatch for you so you can see the pattern. I'm going to chain 21. So 20 chains for my multiple of four plus one is 21. 21 chains. The first row is very simple. We're just going to work into the second chain from the hook. So skip this one, work into the next one right here, and you're gonna work a single crochet. A single crochet into the next a single crochet into the next and into every stitch all the way across. Into that last chain, single crochet. That was row one. For row two, we're going to chain one and turn. We're going to bring in our first accent color for the puff stitches. I'm going to bring in green, just have it handy. We need to work one single crochet into that first stitch but half of it so what I mean by that is put your hook in pull up a loop and stop don't finish that single crochet you want to change color so bring in your accent color just drape it over your hook like that and pull that through to complete a single crochet you have changed colors we're going to work a puff stitch into the next stitch Make sure that you are working over top of your main color. So just lay it right behind your stitches. 
hold it there as you're working your puff stitch. I'm going to yarn over and a puff stitch in this pattern is working until you have 11 loops on your hook. So I'll show you what that looks like. Yarn over into that next stitch, put your hook through and bring up a loop and make sure that you're working around that white, that white strand there. You've got three loops on your hook. We're going to do that again. Yarn over into the same stitch, put your hook through, draw up a loop. We've got five stitches. Yarn over, put your hook through, pull up a loop. We have seven stitches. Yarn over, and you want to make these loose so you can pull back through all the loops. We should have nine loops on our hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more time, yarn over, put your hook through, bring up a loop, and we have 11 loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull back through 10, so don't go back through that very last one. You should have two loops on your hook. Pull on your white yarn just a little bit, your main color. Drop the green, yarn over with that white, and pull back through those two and you've changed colors and finished your puff stitch. Now to continue we want to work over the green yarn. We're going to work three single crochets in between each puff. On that third single crochet you need to change colors before you finish that single crochet. So I'm going to go into the next stitch working around that green yarn single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet, and into the next stitch, half a single crochet. So I'm going to stop at this point, drop my white yarn, pick up that green that I've been carrying, yarn over with that, and finish that single crochet. And that just keeps your colors organized, I guess. So you can see we've got one main color stitch, that's our first stitch, we worked a puff. Now we have three single crochets in the main color and now we're going to work a puff. So into that next stitch, working over that white yarn, work a puff. So basically you're yarning over five times. So find that next stitch, put your hook in and pull up a loop, working over that white yarn. You're going to do that until you have 11 loops on your hook and then you can pull back through 10 and complete the puff with the white, with your white color. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, one more time into the same stitch. I'm going to yarn over, pull back through 10. So I've got two loops left. I'm going to kind of tighten that up a little bit not too tight, you don't want to over cinch it, and yarn over with the white, pull back through two to complete. Pull on your green yarn a little bit, and you're going to work the two and a half single crochets. So one, into the next single crochet, and into the next half a single crochet, drop the white, yarn over with the green, pull back through two. I always like to occasionally pull on my yarn, make sure that it's tight but not cinched too much. And that just keeps your puff stitches and your stitches looking more clean than if they're too loose, especially when you're carrying yarn. All right, so I'm gonna work a puff stitch into the next stitch over my white yarn. Yarn over, back through 10, leaving two loops on your hook, drop the green, pick up the white, and yarn over and go back through two. Cinch that up gently. Now we need our single crochets, so a single crochet in the next, a single crochet in the next, half a single crochet in the next, so 
work that half, drop your white, pick up your green, complete that single crochet. And by working it that way, it sets us up to have this green ready to work our puff into the next stitch. You always have to remember to work over the top of your yarn that you're not using. And work your puffs relatively loosely so you can work back through all of those loops. Grab my white and finish that puff stitch. Single crochet in the next. Single crochet in the next. Half a single crochet in the next. So work till that point, drop your white pick up your green, finish that single crochet. Into the next we're going to work a puff over the top of my white yarn. So make sure it's on right next to my stitch and work that puff. Yarn over back through 10. Tighten that up, pull my white yarn a little bit, yarn over and complete that puff. You should have two stitches here on the end. You can drop your green yarn and just work a single crochet into those last two stitches. And that is row two and our first puff row. For row three, we're going to chain one and turn. This is a very simple row. We are working a single crochet into every stitch across. So remember to work in that first stitch, single crochet, single crochet into the next stitch, and remember to work a single crochet into the top of your puff stitches. You can see on the top, you should have three stitches in between each puff. And you'll know the puffs because of the accent color. So you've got your three whites and then a green. Three whites and a green. And that is an easy way to make sure that your color changes were correct and that you have worked three single crochets in between each puff stitch. So again, row three, we are just working a single crochet. And I will warn you that sometimes that first stitch right next to the puff stitches is tight. So don't forget to go into it. Make sure you're getting three stitches in between each puff. And always working a single crochet into the top of the actual puff. So I'm going to work this single crochet all the way down my little sample and I will then show you how to do the, our second puff row which is row four. So I have worked a single crochet back into every stitch across. If you haven't already, you can cut your green yarn leaving a little bit of a tail so you can weave that in and you can set that aside. Grab your next accent color. I'm going to be using the coral. So I brought in my coral there. It's ready to go. We're going to chain one and turn. And you'll know the rows that you work the puff stitches on is that flat row. So it's sort of opposite what you would think. You would think that you would be working the puffs on the actual puff side, but you don't. The puffs are worked on this flat side. So I've chained one. I'm going to work a single crochet into the next, that first stitch, a single crochet into the next stitch, half a single crochet into the next. So stop, bring in your accent color, drape it over your hook, pull that through to finish your single crochet. And then kind of give everything a little bit of a tug 
Make sure you're working over your white strand. I'm going to get my coral strand out of the way. You can work over the top of it if you want, but if you've never carried yarn, I suggest just worrying about that one strand. So I've got that, that white strand pressed right up against the stitches. I'm going to yarn over and work a puff into the next. Yarn over, pull back through 10, drop my coral. I'm going to pull on some of these to tighten them up. That first puff is always a little bit loose because you are joining at that point the two yarns. There we go. Now I'm going to work over the top of my coral, so just put it right behind, and I'm going to work a single crochet into the next two stitches and then half a single crochet into the next. Stop, pull everything gently, drop my white, pick up my coral, change colors. So you can see that we have put the puff stitching right in between those previous puffs. So that's the pattern that we're going for. So you're basically working a puff stitch into that middle single crochet. So I'm going to work another puff, working over my white yarn. Yarn over, pull back through 10, stop, pull everything gently, pick up my white yarn and finish that puff. Working over the coral, a single crochet in the next two. And half a single crochet. Stop, pick up your coral, and finish that single crochet. Puff stitch, working over the white yarn into the next. Yarn over, back through 10. And if you are working a puff stitch and you don't make it all the way through the loops and loops are falling off before you finish, just pull it out and do it again. That happens, especially with these puff stitches, if you're working too tightly. Into the next two stitches, I'm just working a single crochet. Into the next half a single crochet, always working over the yarn that's not being used. A puff stitch into the next. Back through 10, tighten everything up, drop the coral, pick up the white, yarn over, finish that puff. So at this point I only have four stitches left, so I am just going to work a single crochet into every stitch across. You can drop your coral or your accent color at this point and finish the row with single crochets. I'm going to cut this coral and there is our second puff stitch row or row four. Row five is just like row three. Chain one, turn, and work a single crochet into every stitch all the way across. For row six and our third puff stitch row, going to chain one, turn. I'm going to work a half of a single crochet right into that first stitch, and then I want to change colors because I need to do a puff right away. Grab your next color and pull that color through. Make sure you're working over your white strand. Sometimes these first puffs are a little tricky to get everything situated. So I'm going to work a puff into the very next stitch.
yarn over, pull back through 10, two loops on my hook, just tighten everything up, and yarn over with the white to complete that puff. Working over the yellow now, I'm going to work a single crochet in the next two, half a single crochet into the next, so stop at that point, pick up that yellow accent color and finish that single crochet. And now we can work a puff into the next. two stitches left, single crochet into those two. Row seven, chain one, turn, and a single crochet into every stitch. You can go ahead and cut that yellow. You will have a lot of ends to weave in. I apologize for that. <laughs> We're going to work a single crochet into every stitch for row seven. Don't forget to work into that last stitch of the row. Sometimes the stitches next to those puff stitches can hide. And there is our three puff rows so far. Row eight, chain one, turn. And we wanna work in between these yellow puff stitches. So bring in your next color. For me, that's going to be blue. After you've chained one and turned, work a single crochet into the, that first stitch, a single crochet into the next, and half a single crochet into the next. So stop, bring in your next color, and pull that through to change colors. I'm going to drop that tail, and you can see how it pulls up, but just know that once you finish that puff, you can tighten everything up a little bit better. I'm going to work over my white strand here, my white yarn. Into the next, we're working a puff. Yarn over, pull back through 10, tighten everything, drop that blue yarn, pick up the white and complete the puff. And then the pattern is exactly the same. You want three single crochets in between each puff. So basically two full single crochets and then a half single crochet where you change colors in between your puffs. After that last puff, you can drop your blue and just work a single crochet all the way back across those last four stitches. Chain one, 
turn this next row row nine is just a single crochet into every stitch make sure you hit that first stitch and if you're ever unsure just count your stitches make sure you're on track row 10 chain one turn row 10 is also single crochet all the way across so work into that first stitch and into every stitch all the way across at the end that last stitch work half a single crochet bring in the next color which will be that first double crochet row that separates our puff stitch rows like that chain three turn row 11 is a double crochet row that chain three counts as a double crochet into the very next stitch so not this first stitch go into the next stitch and work a double crochet and a double crochet into every stitch all the way across at the end of row 11 you'll have a double crochet row row 12 chain 3 this is the last row of the repeat that chain 3 counts as a double crochet so into that very next stitch work a double crochet and a double crochet into each stitch all the way across so into that top of your chain three you're going to yarn over do half a double crochet bring in your white yarn here mine is still attached and yarn over with that and pull back and now you've changed colors now you can chain one and we're back at row one so I'm going to work rows one through nine and then we will put a border on I have worked another nine rows so you can see I've got my next four puff rows separated by a single crochet row and then I've worked row nine which is just a single crochet on top of that last puff stitch row we are not going to be working another single crochet or the two double crochet rows we're going to put the border on and the border is a very simple just single crochet rows and I've alternated colors but you can use all one color you can use in any order that you want all of the different colors that are in the blanket what I tried to do was stick with whatever order that I had initially started with so I've got green coral yellow blue green coral yellow blue green if I were working another double crochet row that row would then be coral and so on with the border I just incorporated the colors randomly although I did end with green because I started with green here but play around with it it's completely flexible there's no right or wrong color pattern for this so to do the single crochet border you have just ended on row nine and we are going to work a single crochet initial border all the way around and that just evens everything up and makes it easier to continue to single crochet so I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn sideways so here's where I ended I'm going to turn like this and you just want to work a single crochet all the way around I like to put three single crochets in the corner and this is where a stitch marker might come in handy and I'll show you that once we get around the corner so just as evenly as you can put in single crochets 
around your work. The border has no required stitch count. So if you feel like you need to add a few single crochets to make it look even, feel free. You just want an evenly spaced single crochet row all the way around. I'm going to find the very corner, that first stitch here, and I'm going to work three single crochets. One, two, three. That middle stitch, that one back, so you've got your three that you just worked, that middle stitch is where you want to place all of your corners. So I recommend using a stitch marker here, and that way when you do the next round where that stitch marker is, you'll put three into that stitch where you have the stitch marker. And that just keeps your corners straight and, and correct. I'm just going to, oh that was the same stitch, so there's my three, let's go into the next stitch with a single crochet and your foundation row, just put a single crochet into every stitch across. Again, stitch count does not matter. I am back at the next corner, so I'm just going to work three single crochets into that very last stitch, placing a stitch marker on that middle stitch if you need to, and then turning the corner and working a single crochet back along the side. Here is where we started, so I want to get around, I'm going to put three single crochets into that very last stitch, and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch. So now we've got a very simple start of a border. You can bring in your new color, so I'm going to go ahead and fasten off this white, and because I have blue right here ready to go, I'm going to bring in my blue color. So I fastened off, pull that up. You can start in any stitch. If you want to start right in the corner where you put that stitch marker, and just work your three double crochets. That works. So however you, wherever you like to join on your borders. So I just chained one. Now I'm going to work three single crochets right back into that same stitch where I joined. And there's my corner. So that middle one now needs to have the stitch marker. And then we can just work our way around, working a single crochet into every stitch. The corners always get three, or however many you like to do for your corners. Just remember to put a stitch marker in the exact center stitch of your corner so you know where that corner is and where you need to work the corner on the next round. So I'll work this around, and that is the border pattern. So you just keep going like this for as many rounds as you want your single crochet border to be. You can fasten off, weave in all of those ends, which there will be many, and you'll have a absolutely gorgeous candy button crochet blanket. So here is the candy 
button crochet blanket in its totality. This is my original blanket that I made and I will put all of the pattern notes, the size, anything that you may need to know for this pattern down below in the description box. So be sure to check that out. I will also hopefully very soon have this pattern up on Etsy. I will put a link to the Etsy shop also down below. So check that out. As you can see, this blanket is absolutely gorgeous and it reminds me so much of those candy buttons that we used to eat as kids. The texture is amazing. You've got all of these different puff stitches separated by a very flat double crochet stitch. It is a wonderful baby blanket, very bright, very fun, but obviously you can make this for anybody in your life that enjoys candy buttons or just likes really bright colorful things. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Happy crocheting! Until next time, bye!